Hey. I'm so, I'm so sorry. My internet collapsed on me. Yeah, joys of working from home. Imagine Go doing on. this with six, ten people, and uh, they're all 12 years old. That must be an incredible challenge. Hello, everyone. I am Bartolo for Gallery Teachers, and we are producing a series of videos about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. Today, we talk about marketing for English teachers, teachers in general, and schools. What do you do to promote your business? Our very special guest for today is Ben Phillips of Digivate. He is a marketing expert for uh, the educational world. He has uh, a TEFL qualification and he knows a lot about this industry. Ben, thank you very much for having accepted our invitation. I would like to take this opportunity to talk to our pro members and give them some advice. We are very busy with uh, our projects and uh, producing content and uh, building our community. And uh, we tend to forget to promote all of our services. What can we do to get more visibility straight away? We are a London-based agency and we initially started off, we actually started before Google, which is a weird, scary thing. In 1998, we were initially an SEO agency, so search engine optimization. And um, over time, like you're saying how gallery teachers have had to adapt to the times, we've had to adapt to the times um, in terms of what, how marketing changes and digital marketing especially is an incredibly fast-paced environment which is constantly evolving. We've got everything in-house, everything's under one roof and we have the ability to build websites, market many different companies, whether it be course providers like yourself or big enterprise healthcare companies, uh, fintech anything we, we, we vary massively within industries which is which is a great part of my job is because i get to experience many different businesses it keeps it really interesting but what we do is basically we, we we try and act as a branch of a company's marketing team so often when you work with an agency you probably have an account manager mm -hmm. and the account manager is like the intermediary part and it, and it looks after a lot of the you know the conversation internally but we thought that way is not as transparent as we'd like it. So what we started doing with companies was acting as their sort of outsourced arm of their marketing department, where we have digital strategists, and that's the main point of contact. And then underneath the strategist, you have the PPC specialist, a content writer, and maybe a data analyst. But if you needed SEO, then you'd have an SEO specialist as well. So depending on what a business needed, you would have the relevant people in and you'd have conversation with all of them. So it's like your own team working for gallery teachers. And we found that it actually works really well because it feels more like it's in-house and it feels more like they're working for you rather than you're giving them work. One of the, the main reasons why um, we, we tend to get really good results for our clients is because we have something called the mind approach. So for example, your clients heads, we want to understand how they think. We want to understand where they operate online. We want to understand what their motivation is and we want to understand exactly what they're doing. Where are they? online what are they searching for what are their interests and we take this approach we start off with a really intense discovery session of trying to figure out what your customers are doing the traditional way that digital marketing agencies did was they would do a set and forget oh audience segments they you know that fits into that that fits into that off we go let's just do ads for that the way that the market's changing it's way more audience centric and it's more audience focused. You genuinely want to help the audience you're trying to serve. It can't be a sort of a mindset of, oh, this might get them to buy our product. This is actually going to help them. You're giving them a free workshop. You're giving them some free tips of how to really find the best place to go to and best school, best area, the best tips for working from home and teaching from home online. That kind of sort of attitude that we have to it, I think is really adapted to the environment we're now living in. And it's changed massively over the last year, especially. And you've seen it and many businesses have seen it. And we're having to adapt with those businesses. It's called the mind approach because we always have the mind at heart with, with whatever we're doing. We want to know exactly what the audience, uh, you know, how they're thinking and, and, and understand them. It really is about empathy and understanding. We've done a bit of work for a company called the Institute of Risk Management, which is IRM. So they, similar to yourselves, they had offline courses that they were doing, workshops in person, 
and they with covid had to adapt to the online environment and they were like well we can't do them now we have to do online courses so they came to us we turned everything online and they what they were struggling with was awareness what we did was we created a landing page for for this awareness campaign the awareness was driving traffic got them onto this landing page which then converted them into buying the course. So they wanted, their goal was to increase enrollment and basically using LinkedIn and Google search, Google display. And we managed to get like a 354% return on investment and also a 454% return on ad spend. So we did some incredible work for them and we were driving 2 million in traffic. They were getting so much traction. So we thought, right, course providers are needing this kind of help so we reached out to to like yourself one of my challenges personally as uh, the head of editorial is that i don't know exactly who are our new customers and what they are looking for if we are talking to people from all over the places so if we are for example i published an article about uh, difficulties that students from pakistan have in uh, learning English. And uh, it was a very interesting article of uh, a very high value, uh, academic yeah. value, but it wasn't very popular aside from Pakistan. <laughs> And the same happens with uh, all of the topics. They are interesting for a specific part of the audience. So at the moment, our blog is read all over the world, but the numbers yeah. are not huge. So the blog should be something to connect and uh, exchange ideas Absolutely. and uh, you know if you if you want to write an article about something you are passionate about go yeah. for it you are very welcome to do that and then someone else will uh, enjoy the article so this is something that we do actually we have in-house copywriters the cycle of how any customer operates is like this they see the blog and they think okay they see your name they're like okay right yeah they might have a look you know uh you think oh that was it that was interesting yeah and then they might go offline again they, they might go off somewhere else and then they might pop up again you might see another blog of yours and it's a long drawn out process it's not just a simple process of seeing a blog oh click on the website yeah bye it's like a drawn out process of seeing the blog going away coming back oh yeah i'll go back to that maybe clicking on the website the second time. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, they do that. Right. Going away, doing a bit of research, but they, as you get down that process and that, that funnel, they gain more and more trust. And that's what so many customers now are spending more time researching. They're spending more time actually looking into stuff and, 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 getting that free content first and free stuff first, soaking it all up, building that trust and then executing. We support companies with content writing, but you have the expertise within this teaching environment. What our um, content specialists have is, is the expertise in communicating it to people. So it's almost like a collaboration. You know, it's important to know who it's reaching, but it's absolutely worth doing a blog for an audience in Asia it's absolutely worth doing maybe a blog post for people in South America. The audiences are so different, but yet they are all people who could buy your courses, who could become members. It is absolutely important to make sure that they build trust in, in a company like Gallery Teachers. And really what you need to be doing if you're doing online courses, and this is a massive part of your business now, you need to, be rank, you need to get your ads at the top and you want your organic rankings higher. And that comes through SEO. And then obviously the short term, get in front of them, be in the top ads. You want to be in the top three, right in front of the customer. Because even if you're just doing the ads and they're not clicking, you're not paying anything for them to look at it. They see your name. They see gallery teachers at the top. You're not paying to, for them to see that. You're only paying once they click. But the whole point of what we, what we do as a company is conversion rate optimization is basically making sure the journey is so clean for them and so easy for them to, once they click through the website, they can click, TEFL course, bang, bang, execute, gone. And it's the easiest process. We, want, we don't want the dropout rate. We don't want the bounce rate. We want to heighten the conversion rate. And, uh, and then you start seeing real results. That whole approach is, is get the traffic, get it in, get the right customer. Because there's no point driving the traffic when they're not the right customer. So what would you do in terms of SEO? The blog is so important for your organic ranking. When you're doing these blog posts, you've got to be able to, to write in a way that is captivating, but of real interest. So when you're writing, you don't want to write 
because you think that this will help you gain attention and get them to your website. You want to write so you sincerely want to help their process. You want to help whatever they're doing. And the information that you give has got to be of real value to them. But when you're writing it, do not make it a, you know, a, just a paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. You want to break it up, break it up to, you know, paragraph with then some bullet points or an infographic. And, and this is similar in the way that as you teach people, it's like to get, to keep their attention on that page. You want to obviously reach the right audience. So they go, ah, that's of interest. And how do you get that interest? It's the title, it's the blog, it's the title of the post. If you drop even a link to something else which might be of use to them, um, it builds that trust and you think they actually want to help me. And that's what I think Gallery Teachers is all about. The community that you have is all about giving back a bit more. But in the meantime, you've got courses which they can refresh on. You've got a job board which they can help them get jobs. And more importantly is that they'll keep paying that membership each year and that's that that's that's what you want it's all about that trust with a with a company like yours is is maintaining that trust so always dropping value in blog posts is something which i think is is really really beneficial to to these kind of companies our pro members are director of studies teachers uh, working online and they just opened a business and uh, they're working from home so they are not experienced companies some of them yeah. are so we have also schools experienced teachers looking for something else to improve their okay. business can you give them uh, some ideas on uh, how to increase their visibility from a professional point of view in terms of a small business i think what happens is a lot of startups come to do come to us and they have the issue where they start up and they, they think right um yeah i can do a lot of this promotion ourselves and you to a certain extent you can but it gets to a point of scaling the business where you come to a blockage and you go right i need external help many companies come to us and they think right we're ready for that extra step we're ready for that investment when you have to look at your own business you have to think what is going to be the top of your priority is it going to be organic rankings do you want this long term well obviously you want it long term but is it at the top of your priority because what you've got to remember is that seo search engine optimization is not a short-term game so you're not going to see results until after four months really It can take up to nine months before you actually see that organic rankings going higher. And that's why the best bet, if you have the investment behind it, is to do a two-pronged approach. You do Google ads. Well, not necessarily Google ads, but you do paid ads, which might consist of Google ads, paid social, and then you also have SEO. And then the SEO is the long-term approach. Google ads, you're getting in front of them there and then. If you want to get in front of your customers, you can get in front by using Google ads and you don't even pay anything until they click. So you're just gaining brand recognition. But on that subject of brand recognition and, and awareness, it's really important to really grow your, your awareness early on. And that is through social media. You want to grow organically, have a social presence and know who your customers are and try and reach them through social engagement, getting in front of them with, with posts and even competitions and just interacting with them. You know, you, you want to be communicating, messaging, talking to them, commenting. And, and it's all about being this approachable figure behind a business screen. You know, you've got this business profile, but you've got to be an approachable figure because they don't want to talk to a business. They want to talk to someone that put People want to talk to people. The ultimate aim really as a business is you want to connect with your customers so that they build this trust and this faith and they will buy from you. And, you know, you can go through your own learning of Google ads and setting up your own ads and, it, and it's Google My Business, which is really important because you want to have business information available for anybody who Googles you. Be accessible and be searchable because so many times I, I'm looking at a business and I think, oh, on, I'll check them out on, on Instagram. People often use social media as a search engine and you've got to be online. You've got to be in front of them. If they want to, if they want to search for you on whatever social platform, it's key to, to get in front of them it really is. So I'd say for, for the startups, find out who your audience is and, and where they're operating. Niching down or going global? What do you think for startups? In my opinion, you should test the market. You can repl replicate it to a certain extent, but 
it will never be the same. You will always have to adapt it for that location. So let's say, for example, that a couple of uh, English teachers uh, decide to join forces. They have some uh, expenses and uh, they have to recoup the money as soon as possible in order to launch the business. There are some companies yeah. that focus just on uh, the Italian market or Spanish market. Yeah. Learn English with uh, Spanish. Uh, learn business English while uh, other companies like ourselves are thinking globally. Absolutely. Go for it. Go, go, you know, cast a fishing net wider. But if you cast that net wider and you get a lot of traffic, if you can't cope with that traffic, it's going to look very, very bad. It could actually ruin your business. You're better off going step by step, get a bit wider. In terms of scalability, if you have the resources there to manage Absolutely. Go wide. If there's just two of you, then it might be a case of just starting off with a section of the market, seeing how that goes, testing your ads. It takes a lot of time to manage all the social media. So if uh, you start with uh, Facebook and then Instagram, and then now we have TikTok and producing content for YouTube and so many things, it's uh, a job yeah. on its own. <clears throat> and uh, maybe you don't have all the expertise. Uh, you don't know how to edit or you don't know how to retouch uh, a picture. And there's a lot to learn. So if uh, you are starting a business, what social media would you suggest to start with instead of uh, all of them. Who is your audience? Because each platform differs greatly. So you, you'll be seeing a lot of the younger generations using TikTok, Instagram, and the older generations use more Facebook. Give me an example customer for two English teachers who have, who have started up a business. For example, I had uh, a yoga teacher and uh, her okay. customers were adults, foreigners, yeah. and uh, she needed to improve her English. I think that Instagram is going to be the core. It kind of is with, with terms of ads. When I see ads on Instagram personally, I'd say that Instagram's a really, really good way. Facebook is, I think, because of the adult side of things, a lot of the adults which you might be wanting to target, if you're a business that says, I want to focus on teaching adults English so that they can use it in business, Facebook and even LinkedIn. If you've not got the manpower, it's worth focusing on just a couple of, of channels and making sure you're staying on top. Facebook and Instagram, because they're owned by Facebook, you can have the same analytics through them, through Facebook, and you can manage it so it works sort of simultaneously. Plan your posts. Post maybe two to three times a week because you don't want to be constantly churning stuff. And a bit like a blog post, make it interesting, make it of value to them. And that's how they gain trust ultimately. You don't want to say, just buy this or come and learn off us. Why should they learn off you? Show them why. Don't tell them why. Show them why. Show your expertise by talking about certain situations and talk, giving examples or example videos of you in a lesson and just making it friendly. If, if you're a teacher, you want to be approachable. You want to be friendly. You want to be able to be that person that they can turn to and learn off them, learn off them really easily. How do we convert a lot of likes into money? Engagement. You can't just view it as, yeah, they're liking, but they're not buying. Because that person might be liking those posts. And in a year's time, he might buy. Right, I'm going to do that TEFL course now. I'm going to. He knows where to come because you're in front of them. Liking, liking, liking. It's about nurturing. It's, they're in that funnel. They're engaging with your posts, even if they've already bought your course before, but they're not a member. And maybe they'll think, oh, I could use that. Oh, that could be really useful. Maybe I'll go on it. Just because they're liking and not necessarily buying, It's a good thing that they are liking. It's a good thing. The engagement is there. But you must make, in the same way you must make your, your content valuable to them, you must make it easy for them to click straight through to your site and buy a course. People love simplicity. They, people are lazy. They don't want to make it hard for them to get to your site and buy. They want to be able to click. As soon as they click that post, your story, they want to be able to go straight through. And it's right there. The form is right there for them to fill out and buy. And uh, if some of our pro members want to work with you and uh, use your services, they can find our website on www.digivate.com. We have all services in terms of digital marketing, whether it be social media, Google ads, paid, anything sort of paid social, um, organic social, like I said, um, and conversion rate optimization, SEO. And we also have development. So if you wanted to build a website, then we have the capability of doing that too. In terms of fees, we, our fees sort of, they range massively, but we work on more of a, we measure it by hours. So it's, but we don't have packages necessarily, but 
we our, our sort of benchmark um, usual fee is 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 a sort of a, about two thousand is, is where we start off of, per month to, as an agency fee, but uh, we would recommend that a minimum ad, ad spend on per channel of of one thousand um, pounds, and that's and then you once you're from there you can really scale up the business and you can scale up your ad spend if if you start gaining traction. Um, but you know, if you, we've got plenty of articles, um, online blog articles, we've constantly releasing sort of free advice and just like we talked about, we, we do a lot of just, um, content advice and, and industry news. So you can find us on LinkedIn, always releasing stuff on LinkedIn. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously you can just contact myself, Ben, Ben at digibate.com we can give you advice or, you know, even book you in for a discovery session and, and, and get your business up and running. And that's all for today. I am Bartolo Ansaldi for Gallery Teachers. And uh, today we have Ben Phillips from uh, Digivate. If you like this video, please give us uh, a thumbs up, subscribe, help us grow as a community. And until next time, happy teaching and happy learning.